Hello everyone and hello it's Sarah here and today just so you know we're going to be doing a Q&A about Le Ton Viandre, a novel of Anne Boleyn and of course with yours truly being the author hopefully answering the questions so it's just me today folks and for those of you who are meeting me for the first time Hi, it's Sarah and I'm the founder of the Tudor Travel Guide, your visitor's companion to the houses and castles and manors of the 16th century. Okay, I think it's time to get into what we are talking about today and uh, that is uh, a bit of a Q&A. So, uh, thankfully and uh, thank you very, very much to those people who have sent in questions about the novel. Um, basically, just for those of you who don't know, it's a time slip novel, obviously, about Anne Boleyn. It's about a 21st century heroine who gets sucked back in time and finds herself in the body of Anne Boleyn. And uh, from there, we experience some of the most pivotal moments in Anne's life. And, and uh, I hope, anyway, get really deep into understanding how the relationship between Henry and Anne came about and how it all went so awfully, awfully wrong. Uh, so I won't say any more um, for those of you who might not have read it yet, but let's get on with the questions. So as I said, a few people have sent in questions and I'm going to start actually um, with Anna. I don't know whether Anna's on the call today. I haven't seen Anna yet pop in, but uh, Anna said, why did you choose to flip backwards and forwards in time rather than remain in Tudor times? Well, that is a pretty fundamental question to the novel, uh, it must be said. And um, basically, um, it, it kind of ties into how LTV came about because I was never intending to write the novel. Um, I I loved the Tudor since I was 11 years of age, absolutely obsessed, and I know I'm in good company here, um, but not always fancied writing, but never really set out to write the book. And then one day in August, I remember it very well, 2010, I went visiting Hever Castle with some of my friends. And after we'd looked round, it was a beautiful hot day, and we were sat on the grass having a picnic looking at the front of the castle and I kind of went off into a little daydream and a reverie and 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 I started with that familiar sense of yearning and longing as to what would it be like if for a moment you could actually just drop back into the body of your historical hero or heroine or 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 just drop back in time. I mean, I guess everybody who loves history has a favourite period in history and a favourite character. And, and there's that longing to um, just, what would it be like if I could just be there, just, just for a minute, five minutes, to see them and hear them? What did they sound like? What did they really look like? And so I was toying with that, all of that. And uh, my imagination was running a little bit wild. And, and then I thought, and then it came to me, thinking, gosh, what if I could really get back into Anne's body? And and I think this is where, to be honest, at that stage, I still hadn't decided to write a book, but it, it was at that moment on my way home that I suddenly realised that this book had appeared in my mind and I really desperately needed to write it. It was a really overwhelming sense of of needing to write the book. And uh, actually when I got home and started writing, it was almost like I, I was taking dictation, that the, the, the kind of the thoughts and the words and the scenes were just, just flowing through me. It was absolutely incredible feeling. But I think the, the going back to the question, the reason I wanted to sort of um, make it a time slip is so that, so that that sense of being a modern day person you can still get back and connect deeply with your historical hero and heroine and of course Anne Boleyn with being mine. I wanted to bring my 21st century self and drop myself into the 16th century 
so that I could almost explore it for the first time. I it, Ultimately, actually, I really, really just wanted to get a sense of what would I learn if I turned up in the 16th century? I wanted to approach it as if I was just full and bursting with curiosity so that I could learn more myself about what it would be like to actually live in the 16th century. And I thought that a, a 21st century person going back in time and finding themselves in that scenario would learn so much more than if I was just writing it as if they were all Tudor characters all living in the 16th century and entirely used to what was going on around them. So I suppose it allowed me to explore more and be more curious. So um, that that was certainly um, my, my kind of feeling, feeling around that. Now, kind of a follow on question from that um, comes some really from I think um, from Linda here let's take Linda's question how did you feel when you wrote the book did you feel that you actually went back into Anne's shoes because as I was reading it I was transported back to those days and imagined everything so realistically well yes actually um, so again this kind of this question follows on from the last one because the fact that I'd chosen to be a 21st century woman transporting herself back in time and finding herself in the body of Anne Boleyn was, I suppose, again, quite deliberate on my part because I wanted to get as close to Anne as possible. I literally wanted to get under her skin. And it felt to me that if I was to write a book that was in the third person, then the experience of being Anne falling in love with the King of England and of course all the traumatic events that happened afterwards would always be um, at a distance from me. I would never quite be able to feel them and I really wanted to feel my way through her story and her world so no better way to do that than to actually incarnate in her body and in fact, as I was writing the book, that then allowed me to have a very uh, multi-sensory experience of being Anne and of being with Henry and of being with her sister or her mother or in her world and seeing her experience through her eyes allowed me to really feel it. And so um, I tried to describe things as I was writing in a very intimate and sensory way. So you may or may not notice as you're reading it that not only do I describe things visually, but I wanted to soak in the smell of things. And the so you'll, also, you'll, you'll hear smell, you know, smells are described or um, Anne will quite often touch things because I wanted to imagine that I was actually there. And interestingly, and this might make you smile, every day that I sat down to write, I would take a moment and I would, I would literally close my eyes and drop myself into Anne's body and feel her clothes. So rather than imagining I was wearing 21st century clothes, I would, because I, I reenact as well, so I know what it feels like to wear a Tudor gown. So I would feel the the tightness of the bodice uh, around, you know, the, my chest and my belly and the sleeves and uh, and and I, I it just it just kind of really and I'd look down and imagine that I actually was seeing a gown below me. So I I took quite a lot of time to get into her body, which was both utterly exhilarating at times, and meant I really got felt that I got close to the action. But actually, um, and maybe one day, we'll have another one of these chats about volume two, um, but actually it was, as I moved into the downfall of Anne Boleyn and the deterioration of the relationship, it was actually really upsetting because I was so embroiled in, in her life and the experience of that and her feelings that I remember getting to the end of the book and obviously I'm not doing any spoilers here when 
when I talk about the fact that she does die. I don't deviate from the story. Um, I was absolutely completely wrung out. I was completely wrung out. And there were many times where I actually sat and sobbed because it was so emotional and so painful. And um, I remember seeing a friend afterwards in, uh, in, the, in the couple of weeks after I'd finished writing and they said, what have you done to yourself? Uh, so it was a very, very deeply personal experience. And maybe that is therefore why if you've read LTV and you've had that experience, um, that is, 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 is why you feel that. And, and when people say that to me as an author, I think that's probably one of the most uplifting comments that people can give me when they've read the book because I really wanted not in myself but I wanted everybody else who read it to not just be looking at Anne but to be right there with her so if you have that experience and, and you feel that way then then that makes my kind of heart burst with pride and happiness and joy etc so okay let me just pause for a moment so hello Anna I've just seen you come on and I've just been answering your question actually about uh uh, why did I, um, which was this one, Anna, I'll just show you, I did, I did have it up. Why did you choose to flip backwards and forwards in time? I've been answering that. Um, sorry you missed it, but you catch up on the replay. And just to say hello, hello, Jane, Jane there in California. That's great to see you. And Jackie, hi in Perth. Wonderful. Okay, and Sherry, you made it. You made it. You said you were going to miss it. So Sherry, hello from the USA. Uh, and Elizabeth is making rice pudding well well yes perfect so as I say just yeah do keep giving me the hearts and the as I go and asking questions so I've, I'm answering a few questions that have come up people have sent me in advance but if you've got questions uh, about the book please please do ask and I'll be happy to answer if I can now let me just see I think this is one of Anna's books uh, Anna's questions here that's right yes so Anna I'm glad you arrived in time so Anna is saying in book one you have Anne and Mary is very close and friendly yet in many other books films their relationship is depicted with animosity have you found anything in the sources that would tell us one way or the other uh you know what what was the state of their relationship okay so so as far as I know, um, I did not, I don't think, I don't think there's any record of, of what Anne thought of Mary or what Mary thought of Anne, which means that as an author, you are in the realms of trying again to get under the skin of your characters and get a felt sense of who they are. And um, I think the first thing that struck me I'm sure I'm certainly not alone in this but it really landed with me strongly was that um, Mary in everything she did came across as a woman who was led from her heart she felt to me that she was um, a very loving and kind um, generous individual she was emotional but she she wanted to love and to be love and to be you know, part of the family. And and I think that the warmth of her character just 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 seemed very present for me when I mean obviously I've been reading about the Tudors for a long, long time. Um, but as I, I got even deeper, I, I there was nothing in her actions that I could read or come about that in any way described that she was a spiteful or a jealous kind of person. And and I think she was the kind of person who always you know, tried to give people the benefit of the doubt. Um, probably used a bit, obviously, maybe, um, as a result of that. Um, result of all those lovely, lovely character traits. And so, oh, so yes, I think Mary was led by her heart. Uh, Anne, on the other hand, although Anne, of course, could get emotional and she could be quite tempestuous and uh, I think she could certainly lose her temper. To me, she was always somebody who um, really, first and foremost, acted from her head, not her heart. And so they were very different in those ways. And um, I don't think that Mary was a threat to Anne by the time Anne was coming into the king's sphere 
his relationship with Mary was over. So it would be more to me about how Mary would accept that. And as I say, I, 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 I never came across anything that, that suggested that she was a spiteful, jealous person. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I think, I think that's why I develop that dynamic in that way. I don't, I'm not sure, I really don't know how close the sisters were. I don't think we have any evidence of that. I genuinely feel that George and Anne were, were, you know, totally kindred spirits. They just seem to be on the same wavelength as each other. Um, maybe not quite the same with Mary. And so there was never, I never wrote with that same, there was affection, but there wasn't a, a deep depth of the connection or, or relationship that Anne shared with her brother. And so um, that's how I chose to portray that in the writing. So, okay, have we got any other questions? Let me see. How long did it take you, including research, to write the book? Good question. So, <laughs> so, um, so when I started, I had no idea how long this was my first book. And um, as I said, I just started writing and um, it took me in total, there were two volumes, obviously, in the end. It was a longer it was a longer endeavour than I thought it was going to be. Um, it was about two to three years in total to write both volumes. Um, so I started in August um, 2010 and published volume one in the September 2012. Yeah, September 2012. And for those of you who don't know, um, I don't know how this happened, but I managed to get Natalie Dormer, who played, of course, Anne Boleyn in the Tudors. I, she was a friend of a friend of mine, and uh, we had a wonderful launch party on a boat on the Thames, and we went from Westminster up to Greenwich, and uh, Alison Weir was there, and Natalie Dormer was there, and it was just the most amazing, unforgettable evening. And um, I'd almost finished writing volume two by that stage. I just needed to tidy it up. So that was published in 2013. Um, but um, I did whatever I could throughout the novel to be as historically accurate as possible. And so if you read the novel, you'll notice that is a an index, uh, a gloss, not a, well, there's a glossary, but there's also a kind of a notes chapter at the end. Um, even down to what the weather was like in a certain year, I, I, I wanted to, to, to learn as much as I can about, the, you know, the 16th century, about Anne's world, um, everything from how they dressed, their etiquette and manners, um, their, how, what they, how they ate, what they ate, how they spoke, um, the characters, and of course, in particular, the places. And of course, that's where my really my love of Tudor places really kind of came to the fore and blossomed because as I've said before I felt that in recreating these places um I would when you when you when you can recreate the place you can put things in context more and you can even gain under a deeper understanding of the event and how it unfolded so it was really important for me to get to know as much detail as possible. So I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed the research process. And, and that was from everything from visiting places to doing Tudor reenactment to indeed even in the second book again, there's an extremely um, moving part of the book where uh, Anne, I believe, had a stillborn child um, in 1534 and I spoke to the uh, the neonatal and stillborn um, society Sands here in the UK somebody who'd lost a child and it was very very deeply moving so the research process was utterly utterly fascinating and I loved it okay so is the second book a continuation of the first yes it is so um, in well I, I, again I don't want to spoil the story but yes it is Anne goes hurtling back 
um, into uh, Henry's world. There has been a gap in time, so it's not it's not absolutely continuous in date. We move forward a few years to the point where um, Anne is at her zenith. So we enter the volume two at the point on the day that Anne is being made Marquess of Pembroke. Uh, so um, yeah, we do move forward a bit, and it the next book encapsulates probably some of the, you know the the most dramatic um, events in Anne's life. Okay, so um, okay, let's see what else. Oh, hello, Susan. Susan's joined us. Hello, Susan. Lovely to see you. Um, okay. <laughs> Thank you. So Anne was saying, I think that three years for a total of two books is a huge achievement. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, how long have we been chatting? A little over 20 minutes. And as you know, I like to keep these to about 20 minutes long. And before I go, I've got a few um, things really to cover and to announce. So um, if you are watching this, you haven't read LTV, you're wondering what on earth is this all about? You can purchase um, LTV One, uh, Le Ton Viandre, a novel of Anne Boleyn, volume one on Amazon. Uh, both ebook and paperback and it is now available as the audio version uh, read by yours truly on audible and of course through amazon as well and i have included uh, links somewhere <laughs> in this chat uh, if you are interested okay so i think we're done um oh thank you so much once again everybody for turning up today i hope you're enjoying these live chats it's great just to hang out with you guys and to to catch up on a weekly basis so um it may be though it may be that i am going to change the day of these chats um it might be proving a little bit difficult to continue doing them on a saturday particularly when i start hitting the road and getting out and about and filming and podcasting and i might not be here uh, on saturdays to do these so rather than just sort of chopping and changing and missing them from one week to the other i might be moving them to uh, a tuesday so we have some tudor tuesdays um but um yeah i'm just working on that for the moment okay right i'm done have a wonderful rest of day if it's your morning i have a wonderful evening if you're uh, here in the uk or in europe and it's been lovely to see you and um i look forward to catching up with you with tracy borman uh, next week okay guys see you next week mm -hmm.